Thank you for watching my video and commenting on different platforms. One of the viewer, Anu, she asked me a more specific question about the notes taking habits that I have. And I think it is an excellent question. So please feel free to comment and give me your suggestion of videos and you might be featured in the next video. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support and practical tips during your PhD. So back to the topic of note taking. This question contains two parts. The first part would be how do we identify the right literature? The second part of this question is when we are reading a paper, how do we pay attention to the important part and be able to record this the next time you read? PhD is really stressful because you have to swim through the literature sea. The first tip is name your PDF files with a system. For those who might miss my file system video, I put a link in the description box for you. I explain how I organize my folder. And when you are downloading the PDF, the process of note taking already starts. You want to make sure you understand who is the author, the first author, the year, and a few keywords associated with it. So when you are searching for paper, you're already starting to think of the keywords actively by thinking, why is this paper important to me? The second tip is to use Zotero. I have a video about the working environment of Zotero. If you have a browser and you are taking notes while you are searching on Web of Science, Google Scholar, you can just import all the different sites and PDFs and papers, books or into folders of Zotero. And if you have different subfolders of the topics, then after time, you will be able to retrieve everything a lot easier. So having Zotero as a platform to organize all of these cross references is really essential. Before you even start taking note, I like to emphasize the importance of your attention span. It's become dangerous when you are not aware of how much time you are sitting in front of the computer and trying to search for information. It's crucial before you even start researching, to have a list of items that you want to search, like a laundry list. So I always use time tracking application like Toggle, or you can use a phone timer to understand how long have you been searching on the topic. And on the side, I'll take note of what is the keyword that I'm searching and I will cross them out. So by the time you are sitting at your desk and trying to search during that moment, you are aware of how much time has passed as well as how productive each search term is. Um, I always use OneNote to take all my temporary thoughts because I think it's the safest place to save my idea and I don't have to bother opening a Word document. So take a moment after you search uh, to report in your note and think about are these keyword quality terms for my research? What should I search next? And it's okay if you take a break after a 30 minutes of searching sections and come back to it after a break. But this is a really essential exercise that could take only three minutes or five minutes to conclude your search. And a lot of students don't even know to do it because they get so lost by having 300 search results. But the sign of not seeing important paper in that search term could mean that you need to tailor your search term even better for you to identify the right paper. By saying you read, you are never reading just one static document because in the process of research, you are always cross-referencing and always looking for something else together with the document. For the actual reading phase, when students think about reading, the best student in high school, they read from cover to cover. As a researcher, you don't essentially do the same thing. You are actively reading. You are thinking about your research question and you think of this paper as a tool for you to understand your question. 
So with that mindset, every paper you're reading, you need to consider a few questions. Why is this paper important? And which sections should you go and look at first? Sometimes there is a paper that is mostly relevant for your materials and method, and you don't have to go through every trivial details. There are so many papers for you to read. It's important and crucial for you to first identify which one is the one that you're worth your time highlighting every sentences and reading everything. Simply highlighting all the paragraphs is a common habit of a college student, but really you are trying to get to relevant section of that paper. This is called an active reading process. Before you read the paper, you need to make note on why you are downloading this PDF ask yourself actively these questions. What is the section that is interesting to you the most for this project? Sometimes there are important sections like methodology. The point of reading and taking note is that you don't have to go back to your original document. Think about what have you learned from reading this paragraph and try to write in your own word what are the citable parts of this paper that is specific to your own project. The next time I will know that I am moving along with a lot of citable list of sentences that I know are creditable because I already have done the work of reading and summarizing for my future self. In summary, researching and reading in PhD is a lot different from your college exams. The process is in a cycle. The more you read, the more you realize there is a need to read more. Taking notes from literature review is a lot different from what we are familiar with in school. It is a dynamic process, maybe like a cycle of searching, active reading, organizing your thoughts and notes, and it involves you as a careful thinker to remember the important point, and it takes a lot of decision when you are reading. You need to decide if this is important or not. And remember, keep showing up every day and your skills will be better, your patience at the time will be better. Now to really answer Anu's question about how I exactly use OneNote for taking notes, I will put this abstract idea into a more practical view on the OneNote interface. Having the same notebook for the whole PhD project is totally fine because there are many folders that you could create. I usually put one manuscript or one chapter into a separate folder. Under the folder, notice that you could make pages and subpages. That means if you move this into the interface of OneNote, you will find out the subpages could be your more long-winded, detailed summary of the paper. And I like to name my subpages with the author and year format so that I get to have a sensibility of the field. And when someone asks me in my defense, I will be able to name them with confidence. You can have a figure and screen caption from that paper. Maybe some copied and pasted materials like titles, abstract, important paragraphs, just for the future self to go back to and just appreciate that paper without having to go through all the pages have the top heading like a page before the subpages to have a more summarized view. Put a table on the top and how good were the search terms like you have seen earlier, as well as a list of all the citable materials that I could use right away. In the other word, the top page will serve as a cover page of all the other detailed notes that I would make for the papers. Some of the time you don't need to make detailed notes for every paper and that is totally fine and you could just have one sentence summary of that one methodology citation reference or a statistical method. You may not need a whole page of detailed notes. I like to use PDF Exchange. PDF Exchange is free software and you could highlight a PDF, annotate on the side, if you are used to writing and inking. I actually use a stylus and iPad, and on iPad there is an application called GoodNote, 
and sometimes if this is a really essential PDF document, I will download it and import the PDF on GoodNote and then I will highlight it using my stylus. I think it's really handy to organize your thoughts when you want to write it out. After 10 years of PhD and postdoc experience, I found that my note taking tool has mostly been on a keyboard and I have been quite good at understanding the graphical interface. Um, I haven't been writing on actual paper since a while. And I think there is a good side of it that you can search everything afterwards and your notes are always there and organized. But the sad thing is my handwriting is really bad. So uh, I think there is a bad side to technology. Well, I hope this helps you, Anu, and many other viewers out there. Um, thank you for this question. And if you have any question for PhD coffee time during your PhD, please feel free to shoot me a comment or just write me a message on Facebook or Instagram. I hope this helps and this is it for today. Have a lovely week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.